It's April 15th, tax day 2024. And this is the first update I've done in three or four weeks. I did a, my last update when, when I hung the engine. Uh, since then, I've done the oil lines, the coolant lines, the fuel hoses. I've um, done a lot of firewall forward work, getting the harness um, all terminated. I have all of this ready to go. Built all my cable, battery cables. Um, it's kind of hard to see because there's so much going on now. But uh, I've kind of tucked everything up out of the way uh, for getting things ready for working on the cowling. Um, so this is sort of test fitted, but this will all come off. None of this is tightened. I haven't even done the mounts for the intercooler yet. It's just hanging by the hoses just so I could kind of do my trimming. And then I'll take the, uh, the air filter assembly off of the turbocharger to get all that out of the way uh, for fitting the cowling. I did the front top skin. I got it fitted. And then I, I laid this into place because I wanted to have the fuel selector in place. And uh, I wanted to get my fuel lines run. That's the last thing I have to do. I have one, one fuel line that needs to run to the firewall. And then I'm gonna, there's a couple of carpet pieces and a couple little things that I need to do before I actually attach the front top skin permanently. So this was just uh, the initial fitting uh, to get everything else done. This, um, it's, it's a little bit of a hassle and it took me probably three or four hours at least, maybe five. Um, you have to use, uh, hole finders. I think most of you have probably seen these. Um, so you stick it up underneath to find your hole that's there and then you drill it out. Um, it's just time consuming. You just have to go slow. I uh, I literally did a hole and then a hole and then a hole and then a hole and just to try to keep everything um, in my right spot here and on the other side um, as I was going so I didn't shift anything. And um, also I didn't feel like there was any really good guidance on exactly how this needed to run. Um, this one had a lot of play and I could have put it just about in any orientation I wanted, but the other one, and when I say the other one, the, the other side here, this piece, um, was very stiff. I, I had no play in where this sat. So what it, what I did was I did not want this under a bind, uh, cause I felt like long-term it may crack. It was going to if I, if I moved it in any way, it was bowing out right here. And I uh, probably could have heated it or something, but I just decided that I would kind of lay it how it naturally wanted to lay and that this was an acceptable format because I couldn't really, I looked at pictures of some finite, uh, completed sling TSIs and it seemed like this was from a far off picture, this seemed about right with the with up here being close to the rivet and back here being a bigger gap. Um, so that way this is not under a bind. And then what I did was I measured and I, I matched the other side to it, at least as close as I could. This is a handmade composite part and it is not exactly perfect, but uh, I still have to trim here to get it in the joggle on both sides. Uh, but that's, uh, that's a, a, a big part of the project is done. And then here, these are the holes that are sort of cut out. They're, they're like indented from sling and they didn't line up right. And again, I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna move things and torque them and kind of put them under a load. So I redrilled these, not a big deal. The other side fit just right. So that worked out. So the oil lines, um, one little helpful tip, when you're connecting your oil lines up underneath here, if you can even see it, 
at the bottom of the engine here. Um, I had uh, <laughs> probably, I don't know, about twice that much oil come out when I, um, when I removed the plug to hook up the oil line. It was supposed to have been drained, but obviously they got in a hurry and didn't quite drain it all the way. So uh, I happened to have that cup handy with some screws in it, and I was able to dump the screws and get it under there fairly quickly, but not before I got oil all over my floor. So just kind of, uh, I, I should have thought of that, but um, I had in my mind that the oil had all been drained out, but obviously there's a little left. So um, just a helpful tip to save a mess that I made on myself because I wasn't thinking. Um, I upgraded my oil lines like I upgraded my fuel lines to uh, braided um, PTFE anti-static lines. Um, I used the same lines. Um, here, we'll go over here. So for the oil lines, it's the same thing as I used for the fuel lines. Um, and I did another video on these. So these are um, racing. Um, it's basically a Kevlar. Um, it's the generic kind of Kevlar, and the name is escaping me. Uh, but it's like a, a – it's not steel. It's, uh, it's Kevlar. But anyway, the fabric – it's like a, a weave um, for the bra – instead of stainless steel braiding. Um, and then – Obviously, for the oil lines, they're bigger. Uh, so this is, fuel line is A and 6, oil line A and 8, and, and then this is 10. Um, and then I got all the, um, the fittings for that. Uh, these last few fittings are for the uh, fuel selector. And, uh, and then I've got a couple for the tanks left. So for all of my oil lines and fuel lines, I, I covered them in a uh, fire sleeve, which is like a, an insulated silicone. So Sling gives you this, and then I purchased this for the bigger oil lines. This is a bigger size, so I, I used, so I had to buy new stuff. I bought black for the, uh, for the oil lines, and then I used the orange for the uh, fuel lines. Of course, I covered them in, this is a uh, uh, heat shield. Um, and the, this product is a product that was recommended by uh, Midwest Sky Sports. So they have a video on their Facebook channel. I think he also put it on his YouTube channel about this product with part numbers and all. So I use this. Um, to cover the, uh, the oil lines and the uh, fuel lines. Uh, I use this in the areas where it was anywhere near uh, the exhaust uh, or where there would be heat. Um, but I use the fire sleeving as well on everything. So a little bit of overkill, but um, an extra little bit of weight, but it's up front and it, I don't think it can hurt anything. I also worked on the first part of getting the exhaust I, uh, I removed the, uh, the, the part you need to remove and uh, got it mostly prepped to install the new exhaust tip. But uh, you won't be able to see it, but up in here, it's uh, the weld. The, the people who did the welding on this were on their game and it would not release. Uh, I could not grind it off. Um, I did a lot. I was, I was afraid I was taking away too much material. So anyway, I, I ordered um, on Amazon some sort of aggressive metal uh, Dremel tips, and I'm going to give those a go when they come in tomorrow. And we'll see if I can get that last little bit of the pipe out of here where it's just connected into the weld and just would not release. So uh, that's still a work in progress. The other thing is my prop. Um, I have obviously not hung my prop yet. It was still new in the box. And I realized that um, it was 
included in a service bulletin from Airmaster. So I uh, contacted Airmaster, who put me in contact with, I think it's Sensenich. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, but they're the ones that actually make the, bl uh, the blades. And eventually they got back to me, gave me some shipping information, and I shipped my still new in the box blades back to Cincinnati, or I don't know how you pronounce it. And then they, uh, they basically stripped them and repainted them, I think is what they did. Um, so that was taken care of before I needed them for mounting on the engine. So, so that was good. Um, another thing I, this is the fuel selector. I changed these out as part of going to the, the Teflon braided lines. Um, I needed to change this piece out to do AN6 fittings. Uh, what comes from sling is different. Um, so I ordered these uh, directly from Andair um, months ago. So anyway, I just popped them on there. They require um, 648 retaining compound for these screws. Um, I'm not sure why that very specific one, um, other than just some other high strength Loctite, but I, I ordered exactly what they said. Um, actually, this ended up being a generic. Um, I got it on Amazon. I don't know, that may be questionable. I didn't mean to do that, but uh, it's probably fine. Um, for these screws, it's, uh, I think any Loctite would probably hold them in place. There's four per, it's in the cabin. If it starts to leak, I'll know immediately. Um, but uh, I've been sticking with the, uh, the Loctite from Loctite. Um, but that was, uh, I accidentally ordered that, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Um, I, I just, for the way these screws are, I don't think I need the extra power if there's any, any difference between that and Loctite brand. But anyway, I think that's uh, a pretty fair summary of everything I've been working on. Um, looking in the avionics panel, it still looks like a jumble in there. There's a little bit of organizing left to do, but for the most part, um, I'm pretty well finished. I just have to do cleanup in here. This is just, uh, everything's laid in. I wanted to get everything in here that I'm going to mess with. And then I'm going to start organizing and tucking it away with some clamps and getting things stowed like they need to be, but that's it for today. Um, thanks for watching and, uh, post comments. If you have any questions about what I've been working on, thanks again.